Hey y'all, this is Anna Alexandra. Welcome back to my basement for the season three, is it mid-season, I guess you can call it finale, season three, episode four of Bergerton. And Colin is on fire. He's burning, he's looking at Penelope with new eyes. However, I don't think he's ready yet for her. I think he needs to pine a bit more. And Penelope seems to like actively, like she's seriously, Colin is firmly in the never gonna happen fantasy section of her life. Even after that kiss, she has, she knows he's not eligible. And it looks like she's really actively trying to put herself in front of Lord Debling in a good way, not like a crested away, but in a good way. I'm still on the fence, 80% rooting for Lord Debling, although we know Colin and Penelope is endgame. But right now, he doesn't seem like a bad match for either Penelope or even Cressida. Does she end up with him at the end? I'd be, hmm, hmm, I am intrigued. But I am ready to get to it, and I know you are as well, so I'm gonna get under the big cozy blanket because it's spring in the Pacific Northwest, so that means rain in 58 degree weather. And I have with me, as my beverage, taking inspiration from all of the balls that we've been attending, I made a strawberry lemonade because they keep having lemonade. And then it wasn't until I was putting this together when I was realizing we're going to take a moment before we get to the show. We're going to talk about lemonade for a moment. How much lemonade was a status symbol of the wealthy in the 1800s? Because remember, a <laughs> long time ago, set aside the fact I don't know what the lemon harvest is in England, but I do know that refined sugar was expensive. It was expensive to make, so only the wealthy had it. So having your cakes and cookies, whatever for your tea available all the time, meant you have money. And having not only enough lemons to create enough juice to serve all your guests at these parties, but also to have enough sugar to sweeten that, to have lemonade as your refreshment, that was the status symbol. That means you were the shit. So in honor of the humble lemonade, I, pulled out cute little cocktail glass because they seem to serve them and little cute cordial glasses. So I've got my little strawberry lemonade. Is there more, more in here than strawberries and lemon? Yes. But you do you. I hope you have your favorite beverage. You're remembering that full episode watch along is available on Patreon. And if you're ready, so am I. And let's get to it. Look, this is <gasps> And it is what He brought her a plant. I have bought you a plant. He brought her a plant. So that you might continue to enjoy nature from your windowsill. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> well, you know what she did? She is Colin Bridgerton's help. Many people do much worse to be connected to the Bridgertons. I shall have to pick up Mr. Bridgerton's mantle on assistance. No, 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 no. She does not need your help. She, oh, she doesn't need your help. My other daughter is just happened to drop by and they wish to say good day. So often my Penelope is sat at that window reading and now here she is in the room and we have you to thank for that. Hmm. Is that so? Is there a reason you like that window so much? Is that look over at the Bridgerton's house? I suppose I mostly just enjoy the view. Is it Colin's room? But I have grown rather tired of it and I'm very glad to be here with you. See, she's trying. She... She has, she's moved on from Colin, and I think that's a good thing. Because he's given her no reason to think he's interested. We are expecting the Marquis Samadani to call on Francesca this morning. Can I count on your presence? And the eight children he wishes to bestow upon her. When you were asking about friendship and whether it can blossom into love, is there something you wished to discuss with me? No, with Penelope but it was purely a speculative question. Why did I always think it was Marquis, not Marquess? Gentle reader, a question. <gasps> Who is Benedict calling upon Lady Tilly? You are my solicitor, although whether you remain so depends on what you say next. Is he the solicitor for everybody? I have come to call on you. I do not wish to be called on. Is it our minds? No, she doesn't want to be called. Hold on. <laughs> Question. Splendid. We know Lady Danbury became Lady Danbury because Lord Danbury was given a lordship because they wanted 
a more diverse ladies in waiting for the queen. How did Marcus become a lord? I wonder. It is that very lack of society that has brought me back, not to mention a lack of ladies. Mm. I am occupied a good while, and thus you are free to meet with as many ladies as you might like. It seems the Queen's sparkler, Miss Francesca Bridgerton, may indeed be poised to become the new Marquis Samadani. She lavishes you with praise, Your Majesty. Hmm. You can read from all the way back there. With much practice, anything is possible. <laughs> that I am pleased we are so well practiced in hosting the most exquisite gatherings. We shall arrange one promptly. She's having a ball. And a chance, perhaps, to secure our match for Miss Francesca. Our match. Our. Step another pace backwards. You read me too well. That is the cake. I believe it is called Milfoy. Oh, Milfoy. Our cook has spoken with Lord Samadani's kitchen. This should be exactly to his standard. Oh. Lord Samadani may not choose to call upon me. There is a caller here. Yes, bring him in. <laughs> oh, him. What if the, the Marquess shows up at the same time? Welcome. Nope. Our cook has prepared some milfoy in anticipation of your arrival. I said, I am here to call upon one of your daughters, if I may. <laughs> John Sterling, Earl of Kilmartin. Lord Kilmartin and I met briefly at the Hawkins Ball, but have not had the opportunity for a formal introduction. But he knows where she lives. <laughs> My God, dating was awkward. I had thoughts about that too. Hey, I'll share them later. Awkward. Awkward. She does not speak to him. I am in awe. <laughs> I thought one had to use wit or banter to dissuade a suitor, but simple silence is radically more effective. <laughs> uh, there is another caller here, my lady. Oh no! Miss Francesca. It's a pleasure to see you. And I will just totally bypass this man that is standing here. I do not believe we are known to each other, Lord Kilmartin. But I was just leaving. I do not wish to interfere. Speed dating. <laughs> you believe I should do as they would wish. Give up all that we have built. Was it not you who proclaimed that we should embrace all that we have now? I think what they can have now can go in a heartbeat. This little storyline kind of impacted the <laughs> how the wealthy make their wealth off of the exploitation of others but the fact that oh now you have a title you have this inherited wealth don't work you're not allowed to work it's unbecoming let the little people work for you to keep you wealthy For once, you must allow me to look at a book. You must think only of Lord Devlin today. This book is on voyages to the north where Lord Devlin intends to travel. Well, let him tell you about it. Men love to explain the world to us. If we've already explained it to ourselves from the reading, then they will feel superfluous and unmanned. Or you may be able to hold a conversation. I find books so captivating. I have a collection of over a thousand myself. Nothing a book loves more than to be collected. <laughs> Oh my God, the velvet on his coat jacket is so touchable. Perhaps mine will be in the collection soon. The tragedy of a spinster whose father is now promising to marry her to one of his aged friends. <gasps> oh no. Sounds like German literature. Oh no. Oh no. Perhaps you might grace us tomorrow night with your presence if you are not busy fending off admirers. We are in pursuit of some revelry. Hmm. 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 I think I shall accompany you. Oh no. I could use a little rabble room myself. He's gonna lose himself in wine and women. I do not mind a stirring tale or a book of fact, but in truth I find myself drawn time and time again to stories of love. And what is it about those stories that interests you? Happily ever after. They are histories of connection, of hope for a better life. Does that make me sound terribly vapid? Miss Featherington, I'm happy to learn that you have a passion. 
one that brings you such joy as my research brings me. We are alike in that way. Because I will often be leaving you alone, and you must find a way to occupy your own time. In which the man goes traveling for a very long time, and his wife is happy to stay behind tending the estate. But if the wife did have her own interests in life, then perhaps they could both be very happy. A practical match, but a happy one. I like the sound of that. Mm hmm. How dare I ask Mike, this fictional gentleman, ask for the young lady's hand? Especially if she had no male relative. <gasps> Well, I suppose he would have to ask her mother. I see. And if her mother gave her blessing, do you think she would say yes? You're hesitating. I think you would have to read the book. He does not deserve her. So how far will you go, Colin? I'm afraid my enthusiasm is elsewhere. This evening. So you would prefer to watch? Sure. You have already paid. Sure. There is Lord Kilmartin. Do you know his family? Not well. They're rather reserved and punched and they keep to themselves. Are you interested in him? Yes! What? Have you not been paying attention? I hoped I might see you at the opening of Lord Fuller's collection yesterday. No, I do not often attend society events unless I'm required to by the rules of good manners. And so, are you stopping to speak with us just to be polite <laughs> yes believe you stopped me enjoyable music yes if i am being honest no the pace is too fickle a song like this would be far sweeter if it were played in three fourths and one could in fact feel the music that is helpful <laughs> uh, if you'll excuse me Please tell me he's going to ask him to play it slower. <gasps> no, he left altogether. To answer your question, no. Okay. I'm not interested in him. I... Oh, no. She wears those gowns in the house. Just because. A visitor for Miss Cowper, my lady. What a welcoming home you have. Mm -hmm. It is like... A museum in here. It's so dark. I do not believe I have ever had a friend call to the house before. Truly? Calling her. Certainly you were not clear enough. Hmm. Miss Bridgerton, if I may speak to my daughter. Hmm. Alone? Of course. Hmm. As if Eloise wouldn't leave if a man came over. Not to be seen with that Bridgerton girl any longer. Do we have an understanding? Why? You would think being with Eloise would... Bring her standing up some. Her brother-in-law's the Duke. Brothers of Viscount. <clears throat> Two thirds of the lords have closed their accounts. Cannot afford to bring an outside bartender in until I solve this problem. Oh, no. Maybe these new lord, these lords are jealous that he's now new standing. I did tell you my story of the Contessa, did I not? Uh, yes, but you did not give detail. Well, a gentleman must keep some things to himself. Oh, come now. I do not see a gentleman amongst us. Mm, too true, sir. Too true. <laughs> now I concur with you there. <laughs> but it is tiring, is it not? The necessity imposed on us to remain cavalier about the one thing in life that holds genuine meaning. Do you not find it lonely? Because I think they're rather shallow. Starting to feel the vodka in that now. Miss Featherington. Did her mother say no? Did her mother say no? Lord Devling has requested my permission to propose. Did you give it? Of course I did. Okay. Okay. You have done. Very well. What is up? He travels often, which means it will be up to you to manage his estate. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the kind of influence that will give you? The kind of influence it will give all of us. Mm. His traveling does have its advantages. I do enjoy my privacy, but 
Lord Debling is a bird in the hand, and a very fine bird at that. Do not become greedy in your success. What more could you want? True love. True love. Oh, do not tell me you're holding out for love. Oh, this is the very reason why I discourage you from reading. <laughs> it's only in your storybooks. Do you know what is romantic? A house. Security. Security, that's right, Mama. And if you will not be, then I will be for you. Oh. How exactly? You can't lady whistle down your way out of this one. It will expose you. Oh, Colin, everyone is in the carriage. Are you not dressed? No. I wanted to tell you. I should like to stay home tonight. <laughs> Why is the lady's maid just running up on him also? My head is bottle weary. Forgive me. Bottle weary. Bottle weary. Does that mean drunk? Is that a very polite way of saying drunk? Hung over. Hung over? Oh, I have to use that in the future. You might miss the fruits of your labors. I hear Penelope may be getting a proposal tonight. Tonight? Ooh, ooh, someone shelled out for some entertainment. <laughs> Perhaps this little love play will inspire. Wow. Wow. Fabergé Olé, wow. Can't be in love with Mr. Cole Martin because you've only exchanged 10 words with each other. Miss Featherington. <gasps> Lady Featherington. Have you come to steal away my daughter for a dance, Lord Devling? I do believe she has at least one spot left on her dance card. Many, in fact. In that case, may I have the honor of taking one of your spots? I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. I'm afraid most of us spend our time meddling in the lives of our young people. At least that is my and your sister's favorite pastime. My sister likes to meddle. <laughs> well, in truth, her word does not do her justice. She molds society to her will, and she is rather good at it. Mm -hmm. You do not know that about her? We are becoming reacquainted. Are you? And who are they? is the target of her molding at the moment? <gasps> my daughter. Francesca. Is he gonna mess this up for Francesca? But I am envious. You had the chance to experience a love match. <laughs> that is something I myself have not given up on finding in my second act. Is that what the um, Lady Danbury, Violet Bridgerton series is gonna be called second, a second act? Because I need a series. Even Lady Whistledown could not disagree with the brilliance of my match. How did Miss Mondridge get an invite up onto the grand balcony? Hmm. You must show Mr. Mondridge that this new life is worth his sacrifice. Past lives are dangerous places to revisit. What a story. We were just sharing our thoughts on the ballet. I must say, I do not know that the male dancer needed to be in such a state of undress. I was wondering if somebody was going to mention that. Could not agree more. Nothing worse than a state of undress. If you need to keep your distance from me a while, I understand. No, my father will have to endure it. Mm -hmm. You are unlike many people, Eloise. How is it you have the courage to be so different? It is not courage. I simply cannot understand why others do not see things the way I do. I think Eloise can do what Eloise can do because she's in the middle. She doesn't have a spotlight on her to marry well. Because Daphne did that. And she has the protection of her family's wealth. She has privilege. Oh. <gasps> Let me. 
The ballet has been danced. The queen is satisfied by her sparkler. And I should like to take a little time for myself. If you finished your meddling elsewhere, uh -huh. I can offer myself as your new target. Oh, no. Oh, no. I hear you're something of a molder of society. I understand how my activities may appear rather rakish, but I assure you, they are pure of heart. And is your heart located in your britches? Miss Francesca. <gasps> Did he write her a poem? You must forgive me for rushing off abruptly last time you met. It is only that I wanted to get you this. I am not a man of many words. And the words I do have, I'm afraid they're not very good. But I do believe in the power of a gesture. What did he give your sheet music? Some lemonade. Forgive me, Lord Samadani. Mama, I am keen to return home early, if that is all right. He bought her sheet music. What is happening? <laughs> I believe Lord Samadani was fetching Miss Francesca lemonade. And now she is... Not drinking the lemonade. Precisely, Your Majesty. She is not drinking the lemonade. Well, that was a pinched face. Oh, you're giving me a pain in my chest. Oh. In fact, I have been tender all week. My chest has been sore non-stop, and that is not dropsy of the pancreas. Mama said it is a clear pregnancy sign. It's been a day. Is it? Oh. Are they gonna have girls? They're gonna have girls! How many carriages do the Bridgertons own? Considering how often you travel, it makes a great deal of sense to me that you seek a practical match, but do you imagine that with time, love may one day grow? I do not know. Oh. To be honest, my work has such a large portion of my heart, it may be difficult to make more space. Well, he's just be he's being honest. I'm very glad that you are someone who seems to have such a full life. Right. Purpose when snaring a husband. That is interesting, isn't it? No, I meant your brother is walking right up to Penelope and Lord Debling. Do you mind if I interrupt? Oh. oh thank you should only take a moment. To do what? It appears you two have something to resolve. I shall leave you to it. We shall return to this conversation another time. Yes? Uh -huh. She spots an opportunity, she's quick. You're much too handsome for social ruin. I would be more than happy to finish your dance with you if we need a partner. Okay. You can't marry him. You hardly know him. I know him well enough. They do seem upset, do they not? Eros and Psyche battling it out. Oh, look at you go. Are they not old friends? The oldest of friends, really. Ever since the Featheringtons moved in across the street. Across the street from the Bridgerton house? Directly. The view! The view! Thank you for the dance, Miss Cowper. What does that look? But I cannot stand by and watch you make a mistake. The only mistake was me ever asking for your help in the first place. Shall we return to our conversation? Miss Featherington, why is it you sit at your drawing room window so often? I... All week I've watched you search for someone. I thought you might have had a falling out with Mr. Bridgerton. But now I suspect you may have been searching for him for a very different reason. I do not know of what you speak. I... Speaking of Mr. Bridgerton and the feelings between the two of you. But he didn't ask her to marry him! That is not a possibility. I did not ask if it was a possibility. I asked if you would like it to be. What does it matter? Because you're going to be gone for three years. Miss Featherington, with the amount of time I will be gone, it is essential I make a match with someone whose affections are not already engaged elsewhere. Whatever it is you are searching for, I do hope you find it. Good evening. Oh, no. What have you done? That is your question. Not am I well. Do I only matter to you if I have a Lord's engagement ring on my finger? Oh, no. I know, I know. 
It's a journey. It's the journey. It is said that the heart is forever making the head its fool. I love her gloves. I, I, I love those little gloves. Are you gonna run, Pumpkin? Oh, he is! Lord Kilmartin, he had the music we heard earlier this week rearranged exactly as I imagined it. And when one chooses the heart over the head, often all reason goes out of the window. <laughs> I do not wish to speak with you. Please. We will stop at Bridgeton House first. Did Lord Devlin propose? What business is that of yours? I need to know, did he propose? It is my business, because I care about you. You cannot marry that man. He will leave you. He is just not right for you, Pen. Then who is? Who is God? In fact, he rejected me because of you. Because the scene you caused led him to believe you had feelings for me. Now, will you please let us ride home in silence and leave me alone? I cannot. Please! I cannot. Because what if I did have feelings for you? She wouldn't believe it. I was between two half-naked girls about to have sex with them when I realized I had feelings for you, Pen. But these past few weeks have been full of confounding feelings. Feelings like dreaming of you when I'm asleep and in fact preferring sleep because that is where I might find you. A feeling that is like torture. Love is torturing you. Please, do not say things you do not mean. But I do mean it. It is everything I have wanted to say to you for weeks. Call me your friends. But I very much like to be more than friends. But how does this help Penelope get married? Because he's not promising marriage. He's promising a good time. Well, this night is ending for her a lot differently than she thought it was going to. Colin, you can't ruin her for marriage unless you're planning to marry her yourself. Which is not what he said. Oh, you know I'm gonna have to drop the music out for this scene. How long is this carriage ride? <laughs> great! Yeah, I don't think she would have gotten that with Lord Dublin. Carriage driver, not keep on driving. <laughs> you think anyone saw us? But now what? Now what? We've got four more episodes. Now what? Because too much can come between them in the next four episodes. Do what? Y your family will see me. For God's sake, Penelope Featherington, are you going to marry me or not? What? <laughs> okay. 
So if you haven't watched any of my reactions before, and a reminder if you have, you may be aware I love, <laughs> I'm a timeline person and I also plan ahead. Three act stru story structure, boom, boom, boom. Where things will fall because internally I like to prepare myself for potential badness. Knowing that there's eight episodes, knowing that there's potential badness coming, there has to be because we have to have the black moment. All is lost, all is lost. And so knowing we have eight episodes and we're getting a proposal from Cullen here, that leaves a whole lot of bad shit to happen. But what else are we gonna fill this time with? If this was six episodes, I'd feel a little bit better of the marriage proposal being now here as opposed to here. Because what? So much could go wrong. Because first off, he's got to find out about Whistledown. We know he has to. There's no avoiding it. Again, who else finds out about Whistleton? Mm -hmm -hmm. Whistleton. Whistledown. Who else finds out? Again, does the whole ton find out or just Colin? The queen's not going to be happy with Francesca. So how do we keep the queen's favor? And then we're also filling up time with, with Benedict and the widow and the Mondriches. But there's a whole lot of badness to happen between Colin and Penelope before they actually get married. Cressida, surprising churn. I'm rooting for her. I'm rooting for her to have a happily ever after also. Whether with, it's with Devlin or not, I want her to find happiness. Do I want Devlin to find happiness? Sure. Again, he was very forthright, very true about what he wants, what he finds pleasure in, what he's providing. He has not been hiding anything. So yes, I would like for him to find his match as well. But man, there's going to be some shit going down and what could it be? And I'm not going to read the book. No. So how do you all feel about this ending? Did you want Colin to propose? And where would they live? On the Bridgerton house? In the country? What's he gonna do? <laughs> I'm ruminating. I'm ruminating. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Episode four. Done. Got a few more weeks to wait till the next ones. I don't know if I can or not. I can wait. I can wait because I'm afraid to find out what happens. This is a good place to end it. Are you going to marry me or not? Ta-da! The end. And they lived happily ever after. That's it. That's what I'm going to go with. This is the end of season three. And we got our wish. Ta-da! <laughs> okay. So do not be strangers. If you haven't already, hit subscribe so you know when the next video drops because I would like you there with me for those adventures. And as always, until then, take care of yourselves. Have some lemonade, enjoy a nice pastry, take a breath, and then come back and watch the next video in the queue. So thanks again, y'all, and until next time.